Hey everybody, it's Vince from Spradley Kia here in Pueblo, Colorado. And in today's video, we are going to do the Kia K5 GT front wheel drive. And I'm gonna show you some everyday features. Uh, I go over things like the interior. I do a lot of on the interior. I do a lot of the different drive modes um, at the exterior, um, just everyday features. It's not really a performance video, it's just gonna show you what the 2023 K5 GT looks like and what the average person would do. Um, just wanna let everybody also know that if you are in the market for a vehicle, I can help find one. Uh, even though I'm in Colorado, I sell to every state um, and I sell at MSRP. So if you're in the market, if that's something I could help you do, uh, please reach out and let me know. And don't forget to boop that like button if you want to like and subscribe. All right, guys, here we go. Hey everybody, it's Vince from Spradley here in Pueblo, Colorado. And today I have one of the rarest cars out there. This is a 2023 GT Kia K5 front wheel drive. And when I say it's one of the rarer cars out there, this car here took six months to order and it has finally come in for the customer. And today I'm gonna to do a little video on it. Ironically, he had ordered the other GT K5 that I have on my page. Uh, the white one from a couple of years ago. He's trading that lease in, getting this one, and this is definitely a beautiful vehicle. So I'm going to show you the everyday features that other videos may not show you, and uh, we'll go through this car uh, here one step at a time. Right away, I just want to show you the 19-inch sport alloy wheels with the GT badging on the uh, brakes there. Really, really cool. My favorite part of the outside of this vehicle is the daytime running lights. Uh, I love the amber color here. Uh, super, super cool and very distinctive. I just love how they look. Coming along here along the front, you have the Tiger Nose Grill with Kia's signature badging right there, big and bold on the front. And in this sapphire blue, this car does look amazing. Looks like we have some visitors here coming to say hi, taking a look at the car. I'm a fan of the glossy black. I know a lot of people have problems with it, but I do like the piano black and the glossy black. And then I don't know if you can see right underneath there, you do have your fog lamps, your forward sensors right across the front, and then your kind of your air vents. Got a little duck, little goose geese taking a look at the side profile of the car i like the the caps here all in black with your led uh turn signal flashes right there you do have kia's signature windshield kind of divot as you can tell the windshield is not a flat it's got that little line there so if your car is ever lost in a parking lot you can look at a sea of windshields and you can see how it kind of cuts back there which is really cool you have the one touch lock unlock here on the door handle uh, so as long as you have a key in your pocket you can press that lock or unlock press it twice and it'll unlock a lock and unlock all four doors coming along here then down the side you have your gas cap push and pop as long as the car is unlocked then that cap will unlock if the car is locked then that cap will not open I really do like on this GT, you have the spoiler. It's very distinctive in the blue. Uh, you have that spoiler right there across the back. You have your blacked out shark fin on this front. Oh, I'm sorry, not on the front, on the back. Coming lock here on the back side. Again, you have Kia signature badging right there front and center with above the light bar. You have your backup camera right there along with the button as well to press right there for the trunk to release you got your gt badging on the left and then again you have your parking sensors along the back you have your exhaust which you can really hear this car this car has a 1.6 turbo in it a four cylinder and it definitely performs let's take a look at the trunk space again press a little button there trunk pops right open 
one thing I love about this car is you have pass through. So you have your buttons right there and there that will drop the 40, 60 split uh, back seats right there. So you can, if you're carrying longer items, you can pass through along the back. You have a big trunk, big, beautiful, gigantic trunk, which you have all kinds of accessories for. I'll put some links in the, uh, in the description for uh, trunk liners. If you have kids that play sports and you need these leather liners, they, they work really, really well. I'm a big fan of that kind of stuff because my daughter plays sports and we have the leather mats and the leather liners um, in all of our vehicles. Close the trunk, super easy. You just use your hand, close the trunk, use the center of gravity and it pulls right down. So let me rattle off a couple of features here just on the window sticker. So this guy does have the GT1 package. So with the GT1 package, you have things like the Bose Premium Sound, Safe Exit Assist, Forward Collision Avoidance, Navigation Smart Cruise Control, Curve with Stop and Go, uh, Surround View Monitoring, Highway Driving Assist, Parking Distance Warning, Parking, parking Collision Avoidance Assist, LED Projection Headlights, Forward Folding, Power Folding Mirrors, Heated Steering Wheel, memory seats, ventilated seats, power front seats, auto dimming mirror with home link, which I'm a huge fan of because uh, I have a garage and, and it, you know, it works. But when you have the GT package in comparison to with the other um, GT line package, I misspoke earlier. It's, I said it's a 1.6. This is actually the 2.5 turbo four cylinder, 290 horsepower, 311 pounds of feet of torque. Uh, you have the eight speed dual clutch transmission. 19 inch points alloy wheels with GT brakes. At least I got something right. Sport tuned suspension and quad tip exhaust, the panoramic sunroof, the Syntex seating trim, and the GT Sports design steering wheel with paddle shifters, which is really, really cool. Plus a lot more. I just wanted to rattle that stuff off the Maroni real quick just because uh, those are really cool features and I may not get to all of them. Um, I knew this was a 2.5. I have no idea why it said 1.6. Let's take a look at the back because I like to start going back to front. So right away you see a lot of the glossy piano black here right along the side. Uh, again, I don't have a problem with it. I know a lot of people do, but I think it does look classy, especially when it is uh, done upright. Right over here along the back, this has the black interior. So you have the black leather interior. And I'm gonna go ahead and hop in. So inside here, you do have your red stitch leather going all along the back of the driver's seat. You're gonna see it on that center console. You're gonna see it kind of along that seat here. And then you see it going along the trim on the inside of the vehicle also. I like how these seat belts look. They're pretty good. They're not exactly uh, flimsy flamsy. They don't get in the way. Uh, they're quiet. Uh, I've never had a problem with the seat belts in the back of this car. Uh, I have plenty of leg room. I am five foot 10. Uh, five foot nine, five foot 10, plenty of leg room here. Uh, and that's, this driver's seat is positioned exactly how I would drive it. Uh, you have your mat pocket here, mat pocket on the passenger side. You have your dual USBs back there for charging of devices. You have your vents in the back seat as well for your back passengers. And then I'm just gonna give you a little taste of the, of the cabin right there. You got your oh crap handles right here that you can hold on to and then you also have the little light here uh for back passengers to light give you light and then you have your uh garment hook right there same thing on the other side you have your back light your garment hook and then your little handle um not too shabby you do have this little uh third window there off the c pillar um it's cool i like it especially when the windows are all tinted and you tint that one too um it, it's not bad at all. I don't have any complaints. Definitely a comfortable car uh, for a back passenger, especially if you're an adult. Um, I, I could I could travel multi-states back here. You do have cup holders there in the door handle uh, on driver and passenger side. It's a nice place to uh, point out you have the adjustable seat belts as well. So you can go up and down uh, with your seat belts right there uh, for your uh, for your driver's side. And then let's go take a look at the front cabin because this is where you're gonna spend most of your time if this is your vehicle. And this is where a lot of the cool stuff happens.
All right, so I had the keys in my pocket. Um, I have left this car running, so right away off the front, I do want to tell you and show you the countdown. This vehicle will turn off automatically in 10 minutes and 12 seconds and 11 seconds and 10 seconds. Uh, so it'll idle for about 30 minutes and then it will turn itself off. Uh, and you can set that timer for different time lengths. So I just want to point that out right there on the center screen. Coming over here left to right, you have your window lock controls uh, for uh, if you have little ones or if you just want to control your child locks. So you have that right there. One touch um, doors, uh, window controls right there, your lock and unlock. And then you have your uh, mirrors control right there and then your fold mirror button. Press that button and the mirrors fold in. So if you're like me and you have a garage, um, that you need to park into and you want to fold your mirrors while you scoot in and then unfold them when you scoot out um, that that's kind of very very helpful I'm curious let's see if this has the the mirror trick so uh, this since this does have folded mirrors many key is with the folded mirrors as long as you have this button either toggled to left or right doesn't matter which one if you put the car in reverse the mirrors tilt down and this one does which is really really cool so it's uh it is a feature to where um, it's your parking, your your parking mirrors, uh, your curb mirrors. Um, we can call them many different things, but it is the feature to where your mirrors will tilt down if you have that uh, window mirror control right there. But the switch has to be toggled from left to right. We go ahead and put it in drive park again. The mirrors will tilt back up. I don't know if you can see in the mirror, but you do have the little etching there that does have the um, the blind spot control. So if you're someone's in your blind spot, it'll highlight yellow. Uh, if you are using your turn signal and someone's in your blind spot, it'll also beep at you as well. All right, so let's take a look at the panel here. You have your illumination screen button right here. So uh, you can make this screen in front of you and the infotainment screen brighter or darker. I like a pretty bright screen. You have your lane keep assist, your traction control. You could pop the trunk from that button down there. You do have your hood latch release, and then you have your fuse box panel. Coming here to the steering wheel, you have your voice assistance. So you press that button, it'll activate the voice control in the car. Uh, you can activate things like, uh, like the navigation, um, calling people on your phone when you have your phone paired, that kind of thing. You have your different mode button. Mode's an interesting animal. You press mode, you come over here, and then it's going to give you a list of things of your choosing for your media. So Bluetooth, phone projection, sounds of nature. Sounds of nature is like Kia's uh, meditation music. You know, they're relaxing, you know, chimes and sounds and scenes, that kind of thing. Uh, USB if you still use USB music and then FM and I want to say you should have AM. Yep, AM and Sirius is there too. So the idea is you just check the boxes that you have and that you use and then you can cycle through them with the mode button right there. You do have your volume control and your track control right there and then your answer a call, decline a call right there when you have your phone paired. Coming along here to this side of the, of the steering wheel, you do have your two pages button, which I always like to explain because that two pages button will cycle you left to right on that center screen. And then you have your uh, knob right here. Your yeah, That guy goes up and down. So when you're on a screen you like, you can use that little toggle switch to go up and down. So, uh, you know, this one here with the digital display of your speedometer, uh, you go down one, it's your tire pressure. I'm going to press the two pages button to go left to right. So this is the GT. So this is the big boy. This is a 2.5 liter in the 2.5 engine. So you have a screen here for your torque, your turbo, your oil temperature. And then um, if you take another go left, you have your fuel economy. You have your accumulated fuel economy, your driving info, all that kind of good stuff. And you can have your compass. You have your lane keep assist. And so this is kind of like your attention level. And then you have you know, you're back one more around there with the digital speedometer. Uh, right up top, it says 418 miles. That's 418 miles till empty. Next to it is the P for it tells you what you're in. So right now you're in park. Then you have the 78 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the weather. 18 miles, this car's been driven. You have your, all of your display here. So you have your fuel gauge there on the right. You have your speedometer. You have your trackometer. You have your uh, engine temperature gauge so you kind of have it all right there 
you have your cruise control here so you, you set your cruise control and then you have your toggle switch to, to tell you you know what speed you want to do let's say you set it to 75 miles an hour then you can go down here to adaptive cruise control if you press that button and let's say four car lengths because you could do one through four car lengths you set it to four car lengths then you will stay four car lengths behind that vehicle in front of you as long as you don't exceed your set speed so let's say 75 miles an hour if that car starts doing 80 miles an hour you will engage up to 75 then if someone moves in front of you you will go back down to the car length set to the miles per hour set oops sorry i was looking up at the ducks and uh kind of got the camera floated away from me um and then this guy right here if you can see in that center control you have that steering wheel that's turning off and on right there uh, that is your forward lane keep assist. It's using the information up there in, in that black box uh, to keep you in the lanes, uh, especially useful if you're like on a two lane highway. Uh, it'll read the car in front of you or it'll read, it'll read one of the two lanes. It uses a lot of data points to keep you, uh, you know, as center as possible. Taking a look here at the sticks, you do have your light stick here. I personally love auto. Auto is, you know, you never have to worry about your lights turning on or off. And then you do have that striking daytime running light, which I'm a big fan of that amber running light here in the in the blue. Uh, you do have the uh, window controls here for your wipers. So if you turn that down, you can see right there, it's intermediate, low, high, and then off. Missed opportunity is the auto rain sensing wipers. A lot of the other Kias have them. This one doesn't. Um, personally, I like that. Uh, it rains fairly often here. It snows fairly often here where I live in Colorado. Um, it, to me, it's useful. Uh, I did miss it when I had a car that didn't have it, and then I had a car that had it, and then I went back to a car that didn't have it. Uh, now I have a car that has it again. Uh, it's definitely a feature that personally I, I, I liked. So just thought of a missed opportunity there. All right, scooting right along, let's go to this infotainment system here. So right away, you see Bose right there. Uh, so you know it's Bose audio. Uh, little house takes you home, little arrow takes you back. I'm gonna press the little house button, takes you to your main screen here uh, with controls. Uh, this guy just swipes left and right. Um, so a lot of people leave it on this guy when you're driving. So you can see your music right here. You can see the time and the date. And if you look closely on this side, you can see the, uh, the inlay of the map if you press it it'll take you right to the map and then you do have a try screen here so if you see a little white arrow right there this little screen can be manipulated you can move it up and down when you turn when you connect your phone to it you know you'll have features like the uh, calendar and the weather uh, but you have you know the radio the map time there's a setting in the car where you can add and subtract uh, items right there. Like personally, I don't use the compass, I'm never gonna need it. So I took the compass off so it doesn't cycle through. But if you want that big screen again, just press that little white arrow and then it'll collapse it. And then you have the big, uh, the big screen that uses all three boxes. The map is very easy to use. I mean, you can zoom in and zoom out with these little plus and minuses here. You can turn the navigation voice and the sound effects up and down. Um, you can find a place and set it as a destination. Oops, press map again. You can hit the little uh, magnifying glass here and then you can type in where you want to go as long as the car is not moving. If the car is moving, go ahead and use your voice right here. You can press that and put say something like find directions to uh, the nearest Taco Bell and then it'll do that. And then you just go back here and uh, you are back little arrow little house takes you home like i always like to say uh, then i'm just going to swipe it left so if you don't like the physical uh touch screen you do have kind of like these little buttons and laid to the controls panel right here so you have a button that'll take you right to radio your media so the music on your phone your track forward and backwards setup map navigation and star star is a favorite button i actually use my star a lot so you can set that and then you can make it one of these options so that star could take you right to home to bluetooth driver assistance phone phone projection so that's apple carplay or android auto kia connect uh, which we'll talk about here in a moment uh, display on and off hd radio all that kind of stuff so if you see a little star on any of these kias it's a it's a customizable button i think it's a lot useful in the um in the hybrids uh, but it, there's a lot of our vehicles that have that star button 
So I'm not gonna go into every single one of these guys, but I'm gonna touch lightly on the things that I think the everyday person would want to know. I'm gonna start right away with navigation menu. I think this is very useful if you're traveling. You can go again right into search. You have POI categories, which I use a lot personally. Um, my daughter plays sports and we travel a lot. And so we're in a city that we're not in a lot of the time and we wanna find a, either a sit down restaurant or a fast food restaurant. We can press that button. It's gonna calculate and it's gonna tell us what's near us. So not going to tell you not only your miles you know a way that it is kind of the direction that it is but it'll have you set a destination so if we want to go to this subway right here I can click set a destination right there uh, da -da -da -da. I'm not going to activate Kia Connect so um, you're going to do that when you buy the car but then it'll start your guidance it'll count you down you know three two one the and then down. there we go in point three miles take the second exit at the traffic circle so pretty cool so you know got to go down the roundabout then you go down here and then you go over there and then you got your subway so not horrible i actually like it um let me go back to map i'm going to click cancel route and then that cancels the route that we just set i actually do like the key the kia navigation i used to be a big fan of apple maps um but I really have just become accustomed of the Kia navigation, so I, I, I like it a lot. So you got your phone here, so phone can do Bluetooth. Super, super easy. That's all you do. You just select the name, it'll say Kia on the bottom of your Bluetooth screen, then it'll say pair, then you accept your contacts to be transferred, and then you click allow for probably messages. I mean, you can do it in 35 seconds. It's super, super easy to do. Phone projection, you can do that as well. Please connect a phone that supports Android Auto or Apple CarPlay using an approved USB cable. Uh, I've said it in many other videos. I'll say it here again in this video. Um, you are lower end vehicles, base model Souls, base model Fortes, base model Sportages. All of those have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. The higher end stuff, and I haven't really got a good answer why, but the higher end stuff, you do need a USB port. A USB cord to attach it to you put it in that USB port right there and then that will um, give you Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and then you can hit the phone projection button and set it all up um, while we're down there you got another USB uh, port right there you got your 12 volt right there as well multiple ways to charge items in this car uh, voice memos climate valet mode HD radio HD radio is not high definition high definition radio it's the name of a company called HD, uh, but if you're in a bigger city, you can have traffic, Doppler radar, and uh, fuel prices. In my little town, we do not have that set up. But if you're ever in a town, it'll just activate. You got your radio button, you can go right to, but just by pressing it, uh, it'll take you right into the radio screen. You do have FM, AM, and uh, I thought this was turned down, so I didn't get that. But you have AM, FM, and Sirius radio in this vehicle. Uh, Sirius XM is free for three months. Um, Kia Connect setup and then notifications and user's manual. So let's hit Kia Connect real quick because I do strongly recommend your, your salesperson should be doing this for you, with you. Uh, Kia Connect, Kia Connect settings, turn on 911 Connect. So if your car is in an accident and the airbags deploy and you have your phone connected, it'll call 911 for you. In some cases, it may even give them your location. So super important. It's not 100% technology, so you know don't, if, if your car is mangled and the computer is severely compromised, it's not going to do it. But a lot of good success stories, a lot of life-saving uh, stories out there that you can Google and read about Kia Connect and the 911 Connect as well. But this is where you should activate your Kia Connect. What is Kia Connect? Kia Connect is the app for your phone, Kia Access. So uh, you could do remote start, remote climate. You can see your trips. You can see your fuel economy. If you have a hybrid, it's insanely useful. You can see your battery state of charge. Um, and all kinds of stuff with your hybrid battery. Um, I like it for remote climate here in Colorado because then I can set a temperature like when I'm about to leave for, uh, from work and it's cold outside because it's nighttime and it's snowing. Um, you have about a 10 minute window before the car shuts off and then you can customize the temperature, your heated seats, your air conditioned seats. I mean, you can customize all that stuff. So it's nice and toasty when you get in the car. And then even if it goes off after 10 minutes and you show up 20 minutes later, the car still feels good. So it's it's a really cool system. It's, it's I like it. it I can't say, uh, sing its praise a little bit more. 
Uh, but then you just go in here, you accept the terms of service. So you just, I agree, click next. And then you punch in your phone number right there. It'll send you a code and then some instructions. Fill out the instructions, punch in the code here. Uh, like if you say, I already have a code, you can punch in your verification code right there. 10 seconds later, it's connected. Download the app, use the same username and password that you used to set up the Kia Connect. Your username is gonna be your phone number nine times out of 10. And then your password is the one you set up in the, in the text message that it sends you. If you do it in that order, it's very, very simple. I've had customers do it in a wrong order. Or they start, they try and get the things out of sequence and it seems like it freezes up the system or something, but just do it in the right order. Come to the car, punch in your phone number, let it send you the link, fill out the information in the link, come back here, put in the code, then download the app and use your username and password. Username is usually your phone number um, and you're fine. Like you, I think you're just fine. It, it just works. Little house takes you home, so I'm just gonna hit. Actually, let's go. Little button takes you back. So as you can see, little button will take you back through the previous screens you were just in. And I wanted to go back here to your Kia Connect screen. You do have roadside assistance. It's a five year sixty roadside assistance on this on new on new Kias. Um, so if you don't have to carry the roadside assistance card with you, you can always punch the roadside assistance button right there. It'll call roadside for you. You also do have it up here on the roof. Uh, you have the Kia Connect, your emergency button, and then your info button, which if I'm not mistaken, if you press it, will attempt to call Kia customer service. Yeah. Uh, calendar, weather, vehicle diagnostic, all that stuff's pretty useful. I mean, if you use it, I, I use my calendar a lot doing what I do, and I've learned to be dependent upon my calendar. Uh, really has helped me, you know, personally, and I, I like the fact that my calendar is kind of synced, so that's kind of cool. Kind of scooting down here let's do your climate controls right here in the center you have dual climate controls in this vehicle you have your little blower speeds right here this is what i like to do i like to set it low and then play with the blower speeds that's just something i've always been accustomed to uh, we have your ac right here we have your uh, so you can always turn the ac off so the air can just come in through i recommend turning the ac off at about you know turn your ac on after like 68 degrees if it's under 68 degrees and you can turn your ac off uh, you get the air coming in from outside you know if you have these little buttons set up right so if you have air coming in from outside no ac it tends to cool down the car enough you're a little bit softer on your air conditioning unit i in colorado it works for me um especially because i drive a hybrid so I, I usually i play around with the least amount of energy possible um but that, that's personally just how I've been driving it. If you're not familiar how to work the AC buttons, uh, you have your directionals right there. So you can do feet and face, feet, uh, defroster, face, and just cycle through right there. I am a face kind of guy. So that's where the air comes out of these vents right here. And then you also have a vent right there. Uh, I don't need the air on my feet. Uh, your defrosters are right here. And then you could turn the whole thing off right there if you wish. To activate it, just press any button and it'll go back on uh gear shifter we kind of already covered you know the gist of the gear shifter uh well just with park really but you know it's your standard stuff park reverse neutral drive you can throw it down into drive and then you could pop it to the left and then now i am in sport mode so i have that little one up there instead of p so i can cycle through my gears by you know going up and down a gear so uh this car is really fun when you play with it like that um the Stinger is really fun when you play with it like that, but that's what I would recommend, your sport mode. And then whenever you're done, whenever you don't want to be in sport mode anyway anymore, just pop back to the right, and then you're fine. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Auto hold. Auto hold is quietly one of my favorite features of any Kia. Uh, I use a lot of drive throughs I pick up my daughter from practice a lot. So auto hold is when you are in drive. So I'm in drive right now. Look at me, I'm driving along. I got my forward cameras running, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and let's say I got to creep up just a little bit. And then let's say I'm at a drive through So now the, the drive through is not moving. What am I doing? I want to relax my feet. I'm going to put my foot all the way down on the brake. Press auto hold. You're going to see it in green right there on the screen. Now I can take my feet off the pedals. So my feet are just off the pedals. When I'm ready to go, all I do is hit the accelerator with my foot. So that's that's all I do. Um, put your foot back on the brake and you could turn off auto hold um, and then I'm just gonna put myself back in park um, super easy it's very useful if you're in stop and go traffic if you're you know stuck somewhere and you just want to relax your feet 
Uh, you got your electronic parking brake right there. You have your camera. So if I press that camera button, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and Oops, there are forward parking sensors there. So the camera view, oh, so I'm gonna throw it into reverse real quick, kind of go back into here. So you have your cameras all around, which is really cool. You have your different views here. So if you want to get what's on the side of the car, kind of got a, a dude parked over there next to me. So you can kind of check him out. Like if I'm like, what is that guy doing? We can kind of look and see uh, what he's doing. And you got your full, uh, reverse view there you got your standard view there too bad you can't zoom can you zoom on this thing oh look you can zoom on this one go in go out a bit but there we go and then you got your settings here as well uh, so you can do your distance warning you can turn all this stuff off and on um, it'll beep at you the closer you get to hitting something uh, when you're in reverse which is kind of cool um, but again you're in complete control of all this stuff um drive mode so drive mode is this little knob right here if uh, i turn that knob you're gonna see you can cycle through sport uh, uh sport plus which is really cool on this car sport plus on the gt will turn off your traction control and as you can see i'm in sport plus right now and right there my traction control is off um i've only played with it once and it was on a different vehicle and uh it was actually really really fun i would only recommend it if you knew what you were doing um because it can get away from you but it was really really fun so sport and sport plus sport F plus really makes this car move um it is it is a blast to play with um and then you have your s custom which you can set things like um how you want your suspension if you want a little tighter a little lighter that kind of thing and then you have your normal mode so normal is kind of like your eco it's the mode you should always be in Take a look at these ducks. They're just all around here. They're geese. You can even see them in my rear view. They're my um, side mirror. Anyway, uh, scooting right along, we're almost done. Uh, heated seats, air conditioned seats, heated steering wheel, wireless phone charger right there. So that is something that you wanna make sure is turned on. We didn't really hit it. Uh, if you go into setup and vehicle, then you would be able to go in here and control things like your forward collision avoidance all your safety systems you can turn them off you can turn them on you can set like driver mode change alerts so it'll show you up on the screen when someone changes the mode active sound design so you can make the engine sound a little lighter a little quieter uh, here's your climate here's your cluster so in cluster you can turn that little welcome sound on and off with kia i'm going to turn it on just because it should be on but you can also change your themes so uh, themes are just kind of like the color scheme that are in the car uh, on your displays seats lights let's go to lights real quick or, i'm sorry door gonna make sure auto press uh to press unlock is on smart trunk i'm gonna turn that on because i like to show cars that have that feature uh, so when you approach the trunk, it's going to beep at you twice and then uh, it'll uh, lift the lift the trunk. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it does not close the trunk, but it'll at least lift the trunk. Um, a lot of people love that feature. The two press lock and unlock, like I was talking about towards the beginning of the video, you could turn that on and off if you don't like that. Your convenience. If you don't have little kids and you're like an adult with no rear passengers, you can turn the rear occupancy alert off. What that is, is like when I turn the car off, uh, which the button is right here, it's going to, one, the seat moved me back from mobility, which is kind of cool. And for two, when I open it, it's going to say, check rear seats. So you could turn that off if you are, you know, if you don't have kids. And there's that system check it's going to do every time you turn the car on. And then we're back in business. Um... I want to be back in convenience. So in convenience, you do have, this is where you change your service intervals. This is where you could do that vehicle auto shut off, but this is where you can make sure your wireless phone charger is active. So if your wireless phone charger is not working, could be a couple of things. One, this could be turned off. Two, you could have one of the doors open. So the doors do have to be closed with that. Um, the engine has to be on. Um, one thing I've noticed, I mean, obviously you can't tell, but I have an iPhone 14. The cameras on the back of that thing protrude a, a lot and that seems to be hamper some of my wireless phone stuff i had to buy a whole new one for my desk to be honest because look at the little geese i got little babies 
sorry but I had to buy a whole new one for my for my desk because um, it didn't fit the the iPhone 14 um, so I've noticed that in some of these cars you have to play with where that magnet sits and then it will it'll go um, you can turn it upside down your phone uh, and then that sometimes will give you a better position depending upon if you have the max or the pro or, or whichever one so it's a couple of different options there with the iPhone 14 that I've noticed um, one thing also I want to point out is this car does have the garage door opener home link mirror so you have your buttons down here uh, that you can program to set your garage door opener with and then your wireless phone charger that I've been talking about is just right there I feel like there, I've missed a couple of stuff that I normally you know, cover in some of my other videos, but we're already hitting 35 minutes. So um, one other thing is profile. When you first get in here, set up your profile, settings profile. You can name your car, whatever you want to name it. Uh, you can s collect little uh, pictures here. You have two pages of pictures to, to choose from, and um, you can link it to your different key. It connects that kind of thing. So I just want to make sure that you set that up. Um, that's the gist of it. That's This car is awesome. Like it really, really is. Great sound, great speed. Um, if you are a sports enthusiast and you really want this car to move, you can set this thing up um, as much as you want. Like I said, you can set, put it into sport plus mode. Um, you have a lot of ways to go with this vehicle and none of them are bad. Um, I love the color. Uh, they think I have food. I don't have any food. Um, I love the color. I really, really do. I love the front. I love it all. Uh, sadly, this will probably be the last 2023 um, K5 I do because the 2024s are already able to order. And I believe the 24s are hitting lots already. So not here in Colorado, but they're hitting lots uh, in the east. Um, but just want to get this guy out there, do a video on it because it is such a great car. Uh, go ahead and boot that like button if you uh, have not and you like what you see. Uh, like and subscribe, it definitely does help me out. And if you wanted to order a vehicle, um, I, I ship cars all over the country. I've sent cars to California, Texas, Oregon, New Mexico. Uh, you don't have to be in Colorado to buy a car from me. So if I can help you find something, let me know. Um, we sell at MSRP on everything, everything. So. Uh, we are back at msrp now the market has adjusted back and i am loving it but thanks guys for watching and i will see you guys down at the dealership